Hi, my name is Eugene Stepanov. I'm a senior database solution architect with AWS. Here at AWS, I focus on SQL Server and Postgres. And today, we will talk about a relatively new feature that we launched on April 3rd of this year, and that is SQL Server Read Replica. So, agenda for today. First, we will take a look at uh, RDS SQL Server Multi-AZ feature. Multi-AZ has been around for quite some time. Then, we will take a careful look at RDS SQL Server Read Replica, the new feature. The reason why I want to discuss both of these features together because they're very much closely related. They both built on SQL Server native technology called Always On Availability Group, and Read Replica, in essence, is a logical extension of multi z feature. Then we will discuss some of the limitations that this feature comes with, and then we'll jump straight to the demo. All right. As I mentioned before, uh, SQL Server multi z has been around for quite, um, quite some time. And this is a perfect example how high availability is being delivered to you as a managed experience. Uh, those of you who deployed failover cluster instances or possibly always on availability group know how involved that process is and how many moving parts there is to it. Here on RDS, it is just a click of a button. Um, it's that easy, and um, and I will demonstrate that later. It's going to be part of my demo later. All right. So on the diagram here, you've got a. This is a high level architecture diagram for multi z feature. So you have node one in availability zone A Z one. You also have node two in a separate availability zone called AZ2. Uh, by the way, those of you who are not familiar, AZ stands for availability zone. And availability zone is nothing but a logical grouping of data centers within the larger region. And um, uh, we design these availability zones um, um, in a way that they sit on a different uh, flood planes and they draw power from a different power grids to to give you that resilience in, God forbid, in the case of a natural disaster. So now you have your databases, DB1, DB2, and so forth, and those databases sit on node one. And they are part of um, availability group called RDS AG0. Now, every transaction that has been executed against any of these databases will be synchronously replicated over to node 2. And now, if your application connects uh, via that listener endpoint, uh, then in the case of a failure, the RDS will fail over behind that listener endpoint. And um, you don't need to change anything. You don't need, need to change your application. All your application has to be able to do is to, to have that retry logic to reestablish the dropped connection, and connection will be dropped during the failover, reestablish that connection, and re-execute the SQL that was running um, when when a failover failover process started. All right. Um, as I mentioned, the the transactions to node two will be synchronously replicated, which means that that enables the no data loss no data loss scenario. Um, also. Um, uh, both automatic and manual failover uh, failover uh, available. And um, it is important to remember that multi-AZ feature is available for both enterprise and standard and for uh, modern as well as older uh, versions of SQL Server. But it's only 2016 and 2017 Enterprise Edition. 
that rely on built-in always-on availability group technology for the multi-AZ implementation. All standard editions and all the versions of Enterprise, like 2012 and 2014, they all rely on um, database mirroring for the multi-AZ implementation. And that will become later. Uh, that will become important later. It is also important to remember that that second um, hot standby, secondary hot standby in Node 2, is um, a hot standby uh, exclusively reserved for high availability purposes only. It is not possible to send your read traffic against that um, that replica. Um, and essentially, if you do something like application intent read only, hoping to get to that secondary secondary note, um, that is not going to work that way. Um, our customers loved multi z They loved um, the way we implemented it. They love that now it is so much easier to deploy high availability. Um, but the customer feedback was, it's a great feature, but we really need the ability to offload our read traffic to our read replicas. And we take our, our customer feedback, customers like yourself, very, very seriously. And um, actually, 90% of our roadmap is, is driven by, by the feedback, feedback like that. And um, straight out of the oven, uh, read replica, which was launched, as I said, on April 3rd of this year. All right, what you see on the screen is a high level diagram of the read replica implementation. And hopefully, you realize that this is nothing but a logical extension of a diagram that we saw on the previous slide. Here, you still have your node one in availability zone AZ1. You still have node two in availability zone AZ2. And there is a availability group uh, called RDS AG0. But now we also have node three sitting in availability zone AZ3. Now node three has its own availability group called read replica availability group. And now both RDS AG0 and Read Replica AG are both members of another overarching availability group called Distributed AG. And now every transaction that's been executed against master, against any one of these databases, DB1, DB2, and so forth, will still be synchronously replicated over to the hot standby to the secondary in, on the node two, and will be asynchronously replicated over to node three. I repeat, it's asynchronous replication only. You cannot change that behavior. Now, um, let's talk about the prerequisites. Um, it's an enterprise edition only. I hope that makes sense. Not only it's enterprise only, if you're on 2016, your build number has to be at least this or later, 5216.0 or higher. If you on the lower, on the, on the earlier builds of 2016, you will not be able to launch read replica. If you're on 2017, your build number has to be at least 3049.1 or later. And again, if you are on the earlier builds of 2017, again, you're not going to be able to launch a read replica. Your deployment has to be configured in the multi-Z. Uh, if you're in the single AZ, you will not be able to configure uh, and launch read replica. 
and the automated backup retention policy has to be set to any number greater than zero. I hope that makes sense. With that, let's talk about some of the limitations of the read replica. The first one, it's in region. Uh, currently, it is not possible to launch any of the read replicas in a separate um, in a separate region. You can have only up to five of them at this point. And as I mentioned before, it's asynchronous replication mechanism only. Again, um, read replicas, every read replica comes with its own separate endpoint. And again, uh, going back to the going back to the previous slide, it is impossible to offload your read traffic and get to node three through the primary endpoint. It's just not going to work that way. In order to offload your read traffic, you have to configure your application to go against the read replica endpoint. All right. Um, there's also no failover. There is no failover between your primary and the read replica. There is another mechanism called promotion, but promotion is completely, completely different. It's a completely different, different action, um, and, and it's it's a confusion. It creates confusion for lots of folks. So it's important to understand the difference. Um, what failover does? Failover, you can fail over and you can fail back, but that doesn't change the 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 relationship between your nodes. Um, what promotion does, on the other hand. After you initiate the promotion, the promotion will completely break up the relationship. And by the end, by the time the promotion is, is, is complete, you will end up with completely independent, completely standalone SQL Server deployment that has no longer related to the original uh, uh, master. There will be there will be no relationship between the two. Um, that's very important. It's very important to remember. And with that, let's jump to the demo. All right. Um, I'm here. I'm here at uh, Management Console, and I'm going to click on RDS. Let's go to RDS Console. Let's click on the databases. And here, well, I personally uh, work a lot on Postgres and uh, and SQL Server, so you you see you see some Postgres uh, Aurora Postgres um, uh, RDS Postgres and SQL Server SQL Server instances running. Prior to this demo, I launched four um, instances: one, two, three, and four. Um, as you can see here, two of them are enterprise editions and two standard editions. The three and four are standard editions. Now let's scroll to the very right. Um, you can see all of them, all of them available. And uh, let's take a look at this last column called multi Z. Um, as I mentioned before, multi Z is available for both, for standard and for enterprise, for newer and for older versions, right? So here in the multi-Z column, very simple, right? Yes or no. So we've got two of them deployed as multi-Z here and here, and two of them are single-Z. Um, and again, the newer versions, the, the enterprise editions of 2016 and 2017, rely on all the zone availability group as the underlying mechanism for the for the multi-z. But all the versions and all of the standard editions, right? Um, all standard and uh, 2014 and 2012 of enterprise rely on database mirroring. And you can tell um, in the parentheses it tells you the internal mechanism that it's relying on. All right, with that, let's go ahead and let's launch a new instance. Uh, let's click SQL Server. Let's go with Enterprise Edition. 
here on the uh, uh, version dropdown, again, if you're on 2016, you have to be, you have to be at least at the build number 5216.0 or higher. Uh, if you on the earlier builds, you're not going to be able to launch read, repl read replica. And if you on 2016, you have to be at least at the build number 3049.1 or later. And again, if you on the older builds, you're not going to be able to have your read replica. I'm just going to go ahead with the latest one. And I am going to. Um, just say demo. I'm going to give it identifier, uh, unique identifier demo five. And I am going to give it uh, uh, a master username and the password. All right, and I'm gonna leave a lot of the settings to it, to its defaults. Um, here we're coming up on the availability and durability. And again, um, those of you who deployed failover cluster instances or always on availability group or database mirroring or lock shipping or any of these technologies, know how many steps, how much, how how complex that process is, how involved that process is. Here on RDS, it literally it's a it's a click of a button. You say no and it's single AZ, or you say yes, and we're gonna deploy your HA solution for you. All right, um, here I'm going to deploy to default VPC and I am going to deploy it to my private subnet group and I suggest you do, this, do the same. Do not deploy your database instances into a public, public subnet. It's just a recipe for disaster. And uh, I am going to deploy to my... Uh, private SQL Server security group. Again, security group is nothing but a virtual firewall that lets you configure the port and the protocol, and uh, and uh, that determines what uh, what can uh, uh, come in and out. And essentially, I'm going to scroll to the very bottom, and I'm going to create create database. All right, and now we see our demo five instance uh, being created. So that process, it's gonna take, it's gonna take, if I were to guess, 25, 30 minutes, something like this. But we don't have to wait. I already have enough instances um, that I launched prior to to this recording. So let's go ahead and let's um, uh, go and connect to my instance that I already have running here and available, and that would be demo one. So let's click on that. And we're gonna see a lot of very important details and summary about this instance. Um, but um, what's relevant to this demo is here on the connectivity and security. And here, you see a listener endpoint. So let's grab that. And by the way, you can tell that it's a listener because it has the word listener in the in in the endpoint itself. So I'm going to copy that. And now I am going to my jump box. Well, let me resize the window here. All right, so I have a jump box with SSMS install on it. So let's go ahead and let's connect to our listener endpoint. It is demo one instance. Let's connect to it. 
All right, now we connect it to our listener endpoint. And as you can see, there's nothing on that instance. It's a, it's a freshly built, uh, it's a newly deployed instance. And um, by the way, this database, RDS admin database, um, you, RDS admin database is part of our control plane. So you, our customer, have no visibility, have no control over the, the over that database. It is always there. All right. So now I have this primitive script. It uh, it creates a database. It creates a single table, and it puts a handful of handful of records into that table. So let's go ahead and let's execute it. But first of all, we need to connect this window also. All right. All right, now we connect it. We are, um, uh, it's master here. So let's go ahead and let's create database. All right, database is created. It's called DB2. Let's switch over to it, DB2. And let's go ahead, create the table. All right, table is created. I have 10 records here in my script. Let's go ahead and insert half of them five records and we save the other five for later so okay uh records are inserted let's make sure they're there here's our five records and let's capture the net bias name of the server of our primary server that's the server name that currently backs and serves our listener endpoint right so let me put it here now let's go back to the console we over here uh, this is our demo one instance and let's uh, inject a failure let's click on the reboot all right and i'm gonna say reboot with a failover and now you can see the instance here uh, our instance is being rebooted. Now let's go back to the databases. And again, we're gonna see, we're gonna see it's rebooting. Um, our demo five is still being created. But um, it, it, our primary is being rebooted, but we don't have to wait. Again, we have a high availability deployed and we are connected via the listener endpoint. So let's go back to our, um, to our jump box to the management studio and let's now execute the same select. Well, we still have the five records here, but now let's execute the at at server name and let's see and let's compare the net bias name of the server that backs the and serves the endpoint now. And you can see that the, the name is different now. Um, and the explanation is, is obvious, right? We just experienced the failover. Therefore, the uh, the old the old primary is now being rebooted but the um what used to be a hot hot standby is now new primary all right so with that let's go back to the console and let's refresh it So demo one is now available. And uh, let's go ahead and let's create a read replica. Read replica here, it's off of the actions menu. Create read replica. And it takes us to the screen very similar to what we just went through, the, the creation screen. Um, um, 
And, and here's the power of a read replica. You don't have to size your read replica exactly the same way you size your primary. Um, you can, well, of course, depending on what you're going to do with it. But if you, if the intention is to send um, a heavy read traffic over to it, maybe you need a bigger box. Or maybe you can get away with uh, with the smaller instance. Just just be aware that, that this read replica still has to keep up with the primary. Keep that in mind. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create the same instance size. Um, I'm going to leave um, a lot of it to its default. And I'm going to say here, oh, this is the read replica source for the, so for the instance identifier, let's go ahead and let's say demo one read replica. All right. Everything else is going to live alone. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to create, create. We're going to click create read replica. All right. So let's refresh the screen. And now we can see that an instance called demo dash one dash read replica is it has a role of replica and demo one is a master and let's scroll over and now it is being created all right so this process is going to take a few minutes so i'm going to pause the recording and i'm going to go come back when when we have uh, our read replica up and running. Thank you. All right, it's been it's been about twenty minutes. I'm back, um, and let's take a look. Let's take a look what's going on with our read replica. So it's right here, demo read replica, and the status is now available. All right, so let's go ahead and let's try to connect. All right, you click on the uh, uh, read replica, and we are going to grab this endpoint. Copy that. And let's go to the jump box. We still connected to our listener. And now let's open another connection. to our read replica. All right. So it is right here, demo-1-read-replica. And we have our DB2 uh, database. It's called synchronized. Let's take a look. Uh, table one is here and let's select. We have five records. Now, Let's go back to our primary. This is still our listener, right? This is the, the primary listener endpoint. And let's insert the another five records. So I'm inserted five records. Let's make sure they're there. All right, we have now we have now 10 records. And now let's go back to the read replica and let's re-execute the connection and now we see the same same five uh, I'm sorry, 10 records. All right. Now let's go back to the console. So here I have my demo one read replica and now if i scroll down i'm coming up on this replication section and here you can see our our master uh role is master and then our uh, read replica which obviously has role of replica and now you can see the replication state 
it's replicating. And also there's this lag column. Well, uh, in my case, it's not populated, but essentially what it is, it's a, it's a number of seconds that your read replica is behind your master. And the way we calculate it, essentially, if you have two databases, one is behind by five seconds, another one is behind by 10 seconds, this lag is going to show you the 10 seconds, seconds. So it's the highest of all the lags for uh, all of the databases that are being replicated. All right, and now let's go and let's promote our replica. It is here again off of the actions menu. You can click promote. And again, um, um, there are some configuration parameters. You click on continue. And here the, here's the note that essentially says that this is irreversible. It's a one-way street. After you click on that promotion button, there will be no going back. You will not be able to um, establish a, a replication between your read replica and your uh, master. All right, so we click read rep, promote read replica. Let's click on databases. Let's see status. It's now being modified. So this process is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to come back when it's done. All right. It's been about two minutes, and now we have our read replica uh, being available. So the process has completed. And in the role column, you now can see it's just an instance. Our demo one is no longer say master, and our read replica knows, no longer says, says replica because now it's a standalone, it's a standalone instance. All right, and that brings us to the end of this demo. Um, I hope that was beneficial. Thank you very, very much uh, for finding time and watching this video. Again, I hope, I hope you learn a lot, and I hope um, you now see how easy it is to deploy read replica on, on RDS. And with that, um, I would like to wish all of you happy computing from all of us at AWS. Thank you very much.